Mike Bost is joining us on the other end of the line. Mike, you didn't do anything this weekend, didn't you? You didn't go to any parades or drive a John Deere mower down any street in southern Illinois, did you? No. No, no I just stayed at home. Really didn't they? No. <laughs> I know you were out pressing the flesh. Hey, yeah. uh, Mike, before we move on to issues this morning, I, I, one last time, I want to revisit this subject. Congressman Inyart was on. Paula Bradshaw was on with us. Uh, the debate question one last time. Your comments before we close this and move on to other areas. We are having two debates. We could not come to an agreement between one debate, but it wasn't because it was I, my date didn't work, Bill Inyart's date didn't work, and then WSIU didn't have any other section to put us in. But I'm not, believe me, I debate Mike Madigan and every other uh, person, Republican, Democrat, on the House floor, so I don't have any problem with, with talking with the people. Matter of fact, since July, we went to over 100 and somewhere between 130 and 140 new events where I'm going face to face with the people to talk about the issues. Never been a problem for me to talk about the issues. It was a scheduling problem. Mike, over the weekend, I, I think this is a good way to to kind of to kind of package this up. Pope Francis over the weekend said we might be facing or might be in World War III, except it's piecemeal. Now, it's interesting because a number of these issues that he referenced, or I believe he was referencing, are deals in which we look to the legislative body in Washington to deal with, not the least of which is ISIS or the okay. Ukraine. Um, yeah. I mean, or the immigration issues. I mean, I could literally list, run down the list. The litany. Goes on and on and on. It, sure. it does. And, and these, are the, these are the issues. And I was wondering, I mean, how do you begin to prioritize big items like this? Well, when, as far as the legislature, as far as the federal legislature, each one, though you are assigned, when we're talking about domestic issues, you, you may work on a committee that decides this issue or that issue. But what we have to remember is, is that there are three areas that are priority according to our Constitution that is a requirement of the federal government. Dealing with foreign trade dealing with national defense and protecting our borders. That's it. That's it. And unfortunately, we go off on, you know, it, it doesn't mean these other issues aren't important, and they are. But we have a priority, and that priority as the federal government. And here's, you know, you and I have talked about this before. So many times the federal government spends its time trying to deal with either state or local issues. They need to stay out of those. Now, there are certain things they do need to be involved with. The, 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 there are, are protecting of our water, you know, the, the protecting uh, levees, okay, because that, the, the, there are issues that are like that. Uh, but there are so many issues that the federal government is involved in they shouldn't be in. We need to be focused. And one thing we need to make sure of is, is we do need to make sure that we have a strong national defense. We had that, and we were able to send a clear message to the rest of the world to try to uh, to try – to try to send a clear message that, you know, we are the superpower. Unfortunately, right. I believe under this administration we're falling. All right. Would one of the issues which you would say the federal government is in an area where they shouldn't be, would that be school lunches? It's everything involved. In, the education system itself should be, the education system that should be, should be controlled by the states, by the states. Now, and, and also when we talk about, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, all of those social issues like public aid, like food safety, all of these things are things that the, uh, that the states should be administering with as little interference as possible from the federal, federal government. You know, you know, one of the items that has me most aggravated right now, and it's not a high-priority item because it's just foolish and stupid and duplicitous, and that is the fact that you can use an EBT card from your welfare to buy medical marijuana. While at the same time, uh, it's against the law to sell marijuana, and the companies and, and shops and states that have approved of it, uh, won't, the banks won't take their money. because they've. But on the other hand, the state right. will take. You, because, they, but, but what you've got there is, is what we've got is, is we've got states, States that are not set down with federal on, and that's once again, you know, and, and I'm not for the legalization of marijuana. I'm not for the, uh, I, I didn't vote for even medical marijuana. But let me tell you that what you've done, done here is, is you've got federal rule, you know, overseeing state rule, and there's an argument between who has the power of the state 
and what is the federal role involved in it? But this is where the argument falls. But you look back at this. Look at the look at the state of Illinois. When I had Mark Collins on last week, talk uh, talk about the school lunch and how unhappy is it. But but we've got to have the eight hundred thousand dollars that comes from that. Well, see, that's not federal money. That's states. That's money taken from the states, and then they say, "Look, we're not going to give you your money back until you do what we want." Uh, and, and see, I, been, I don't I, been an extorting been an argument. extorting the person that you took the money away from. To me, <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of that way of getting things done. <laughs> well, but it's, let me give you let me give you examples of how that has happened over the years and where our federal government federal legislators should have probably stood against it. It started years ago. It started with the federal highway funds having so much power, which we, which it is because of interstate commerce. Because of interstate commerce, you need to make sure that the federal government is involved in that. We're making sure our roads, roads, bridges, uh, uh, railroads, all of the uh, waterways are all opened up and commerce can occur. That being said. That to, to, to tie that with, if you don't pass seatbelt laws, and I'm not in opposition to seatbelt laws, but, but they tell the state government, if you don't pass seatbelt laws, that's okay, we'll just cut off your highway funds. Or if you don't pass helmet laws, we'll cut off your highway funds. So the sovereignty of the states diminish when the federal government has control of large dollars because then they get away from the constitutionality and they're saying, oh, no, you can still pass whatever law you want. But if you, pass, if you don't pass these laws – then we're not going to give you your money back. One of the biggest items we face is debt. On our way to 17, if we're not already there, a trillion no. dollars. For the first time in American history, $6 trillion of American government debt is owned by foreign powers. Uh, and right now, they're looking at a spending bill in Washington, and it looks to be the proverbial kicking of the can from early indications. Right. And and let me tell you that I just met this week, and and. So you know this, uh, 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 the, the chairman of the uh, Ag Committee uh, for the United States uh, uh, came in, and we had we were we had him for the weekend. Matter of fact, with what well, he was at Apple Fest, and then uh, the, the thing that we need to know. And I'm sorry, I, I lost your question because my mind was. Uh, you you had made the statement. That that, uh, that that looks like only a short term spending. I right, mean, we still right. don't have a budget yet. Well, you've got right. some experience with it. I tell you what, Mike, we're running out of time here. Okay. So what I really like to do is, you're, can you join us Wednesday at eight twenty? So because I want to get I, into I, an issues based conversation with because, you. Because because we have so many issues out there that we do need to talk about. Let me tell you that that the spending must get under control. Uh, it can do it. But it has to be working in a bipartisan manner. I, you know that I've been able to do that working in a bipartisan manner in Springfield for, for many years on a lot of issues. There are some issues that you're just going to have to clash us on. But the reality is that we've been able to sit down and work through the years. And there needs to be a lot of work done in Washington because yes, we're still – it, the money is stacking up. The debt is stacking up. It's never stopped. It's now 729. Illinois State Representative Mike Boss. Mike, you will be able to join us Wednesday at 820. You, so we, you bet. Okay. We'll be there. Because we're going to literally go into, I'm going to create an issues list, and we're going to start running down that list with our candidates Thursday, excuse me, Wednesday at 820 here at News Radio WJPF.